Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to be drawing on and reviewing the Simbonds Picasso Tab XL. Simbonds recently reached out to me and asked me to review their Picasso Tab XL. The really interesting thing about the Picasso Tab XL is that it is an Android tablet with drawing capabilities. So you can do things like watch YouTube, play games, and all that stuff, but you can also draw. Simbonds did send me this tablet for free, but all thoughts and opinions are my own. I'll also be trying out a new art app and drawing one of my original characters. So let's get started. First we'll take a look at the tablet and what comes with it. We have a drawing glove to help your hand glide around on the surface of the tablet. A pretty fancy case to hold and protect the tablet. I like how the case folds so that the tablet can be stood up at an angle. This is very handy. Then we have the power cords and adapters and of course the pen. The pen feels pretty solid and has a metal like feel to it. The pen does require batteries, it uses quadruple A, and they do give you a spare battery, so that's really nice. I will talk more about the pen in a bit, for now let's take a closer look at the tablet. As you can see, the tablet does have a glossy display, and it comes with a screen protector pre-installed. The screen is 11.6 inches, so it's a nice size while still staying portable. I feel like I could still carry this tablet around in like a backpack or something. On the right side we have the power and volume buttons, and on one of the corners we have the different ports. Oh, and the tablet also features a front and back facing camera. Now that we have taken a look at the tablet, let's test it out. I'm starting by testing out the tablet in the app Infinite Painter. I have never used this app before, but Simbonds requested that I try it out because they are thinking about having the tablet come with this app pre-installed. They also requested that I tested the art app concepts, and I did try that app, but it didn't really fit my preferences. I preferred Infinite Painter in this case. Uh, so right now I'm testing out some of the brushes and also getting a feel for the tablet. Overall, the tablet is fairly responsive to changes in pen pressure. I did notice that there is some latency. If you look closely, you can see that what I draw lags behind the pen a bit. I did double check the settings to make sure it wasn't because of something I had turned on. I also tested the tablet with multiple apps, and there was always some latency when drawing in each of the apps. Latency is a common thing for these types of tablets. It can be a bit of an annoyance at times, but I personally don't see it as a deal breaker, and I'll talk a bit more about this in a little bit. Uh, for now, to test out Infinite Painter, I decided to draw a quick sketch of Link. I didn't know what to draw, so I just drew Link. As I say, when in doubt, draw Link. <laughs> I ended up drawing Skyward Sword Link, mostly just because his hair part is on the right, and I was drawing a profile turned to the left, so the hair part is easier to draw when it's on the right side. Also, I am speeding through this footage because I don't have a ton to say about it and because I want to have enough time to talk about the main art piece for this video. I do have to say I really like the brushes in Infinite Painter. They all have a really nice texture and feel really nice to use. And there's a very good variety of different brushes to choose from. You do need to pay for some of the premium features in Infinite Painter. I didn't pay for any of the premium features since I'm just testing out the app. Uh, so this app is still very usable even without the premium content. And I think that's cool. You can definitely still draw on it. I also really like that it records your process. I always like when apps have this feature. It makes sharing the art process so much easier. The way it records the process is a bit interesting. It seems to keep in all of the undoing, selecting, and stuff like that. So the process does look a bit less satisfying than usual. <laughs> you can see all the times I undo and stuff. Also, the tablet itself does have a built-in screen recorder. And I was really happy that it had that. For people like me that record their screens a lot, this is very handy. Oh, also, if you're interested in drawing tutorials related to the Picasso tab, Simbonds has drawing tutorials on their channel, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check those out. Anyways, overall, I think Infinite Painter is a really neat app. However, I do want to test this tablet with an app that I am more familiar with, so I can get a better idea of how I feel about the tablet itself. So I'm going to switch over to drawing in Ibis Paint. I've drawn in it a good amount of times, and I know many of you use Ibis Paint, so you're probably curious as to how it works on this tablet. So for this drawing, I'm going to show you the sketching process in this super speed format, and then we will switch over to the footage from my camera. That way you can see me working with the tablet some more. I wasn't totally sure what to draw for this review, but I needed to draw something, and since it is currently fall where I live, I thought it might be fun to draw something fall related. And then I remembered about my OC Gwendolyn, I haven't drawn her in ages, but I call her my fall baby since she is fall themed. So I did think it'd be fun to draw her. 
When I was trying to think of an idea, I kept wanting to push myself out of my comfort zone for some reason, but I was also like, no, don't do that because you're using a tablet that you're not super used to. <laughs> it seems like when I get new things, I want to make everything new, but that can lead to frustration. Uh, so I stayed kind of in my comfort zone, but I did make the camera kind of point down at Gwen and she is looking up at us so it makes the composition a bit more interesting. Also for all of this I'm using the pencil number two brush. I just like it for some reason. There isn't really anything special about it. It kind of just has a soft texture to it I suppose. Now that my drawing is in place we'll go to the coloring and footage captured by my camera. I do apologize that you can kind of see stuff being reflected in the screen of the tablet. It doesn't have any kind of texture to it so it reflects everything. <laughs> it's really hard to film screens like this. My iPad has a matte screen protector on it, uh, so that's why it doesn't usually reflect things when I record it. Uh, so I did like testing this tablet with Infinite Painter. However, I am happy I tested it with Ibis Paint as well because it did allow me to get a better feel for just the tablet itself. And I will be sharing those thoughts with you in just a moment. I do want to pre-say that this tablet is intended for beginners and students, or you could say the more casual market. This isn't really intended for professionals or for people that want something on the higher end of the market. So let's start with the tablet's performance as just a tablet. The overall speed of the tablet is good and it does run on Android 11, which is a pretty new version of Android so you can use a lot of the newest apps. I did test some of the different apps and watched YouTube on it. And yeah, as a standard tablet for casual use, it works really well. Also the speakers can get really loud, so it works well for playing music. And the cameras themselves are also pretty decent quality. Okay, so it works great as a tablet, but what about the drawing part? And drawing on the tablet is good. It was a solid experience. I felt like I was able to finish my illustration without too much discomfort or issues. And sometimes it does take me a while to adjust to different tablets, but I didn't have a super hard time adjusting to this tablet. I do like that the Picasso tab does have a form of palm rejection to make it so that your palm isn't activating the stuff on screen. The way it does this is if the pen is super close to the screen or touching the screen, your palm or finger won't work, only the pen will. The palm rejection works pretty well, but I did still have some issues with my palm accidentally pressing things and drawing on my canvas, and I feel like it happened more often than it does with my iPad. I would have all these tiny little dots drawn on my canvas from my palm resting on the screen. However, Simbonds does recommend using the provided glove to make the palm rejection work better. I don't really like wearing drawing gloves, so this is my own fault. <laughs> the palm rejection probably works better if you wear the glove. So if you find that's an issue, you should probably wear it. <laughs> Another slight issue for me was the latency. As I mentioned earlier, what I draw kind of lags behind the pen. I did get used to it after a bit, and a lot of times I do turn on stabilization so that my pen does do this. The only time I really noticed it was when I was sketching and trying to draw stuff kind of fast. But when I was doing stuff like line art and coloring, I didn't notice it as much. Only when I was trying to draw really fast. Uh, but none of this makes the tablet a bad drawing experience. The pen works well, the display is nice, and the tablet is a good size for drawing, but it's not too large that you couldn't take it places. Also, the battery life is really good. I've been able to use it for long periods of time without needing to charge it, so that's really nice. This tablet is currently $260, and this is much more affordable than something like an iPad and Apple Pencil. The cheapest you can get that for is like over $400. So this tablet is on the more affordable side, but the performance is a bit lower than something of that like an iPad and Apple Pencil. If you are a beginner looking for a tablet that has drawing abilities, I feel like this is a nice option, especially if you don't have something like a computer or a laptop you can use. This is a great upgrade if you are used to drawing on your phone with your finger. However, if you are more serious about art and are looking for something on the more professional side, I don't know if I would recommend this for you. Like I said, if you're just starting out and you're looking for something that is kind of an all-in-one experience that isn't going to break the bank, I feel like this could be a good option. Overall, my experience with the Picasso Tap XL was good and I was able to finish my illustration comfortably. Also, Ibis Paint worked really well on this tablet. It was fast and I was able to make a ton of layers and my canvas was a pretty good size. So this was all really nice. It worked really well, thankfully. Also, if you're interested in checking out the Picasso Tab XL, all of the links are in the description. Also, I do apologize that I did a lot of the finishing touches off camera. I kind of thought I was done, but then I was like, uh, no, I'm gonna add some more stuff. So I ended up adding some light rays, some leaves, 
and also some more gradients and color correcting. I did notice that the colors on the tablet looked kind of different from the colors on my computer screen. So I did a bit of color correcting on my computer. And here's my finished illustration of Gwendolyn. It was a lot of fun drawing my fall themed baby again. Like I said, I haven't drawn her in a really, really long time. I always really love making fall themed illustrations. The colors of fall are so pretty. And I kind of want to try to make a couple more before fall is over. <laughs> well, that is all for this video. And I will see you all on Saturday for my usual weekly video. Bye.